I will take a moment or two to tell you of an experience that I had in the International Convention of the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship some years back and this was witnessed by about ten persons two international directors of the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship and other persons whose names I could give you and addresses and so on it was not done in a corner for me at that time it was a unique experience we dealt with a woman of English background who is now a friend of ours, I know her personally, who came brought by a pastor for deliverance. I won't go into the details of how it started, but we spent, my wife and I, five hours praying with this girl and a lady who sat by, and I didn't ask her to do this, counted and wrote down the names of 72 spirits that identified themselves and came out of her. Now, I'm sure there are many people with lots more than 72 spirits. After all, in the Bible, there was a man with a legion, which is 6,000. About one-third of the way through this, every spirit spoke. I didn't ask them to, but they did. In fact, they started talking to me before I even knew what was happening. One of them said, I'm a seducing spirit. So I said, come out. And it said, I'm the seducer of the faith. So I said, still come out. And it said, I'm the chief one. And I said, still come out. And then it said, I have many roots. And I said, well, come out with all your roots in the name of Jesus. And then this girl or woman started to mention certain doctrines or put on certain acts. And after a few minutes, I realized that these were the roots of the seducing spirit that were coming out and I grabbed a tablet with the Conrad Hilton name at the top and I wrote them down and I actually wrote down 37 different deceiving spirits that came out of this one girl all under the heading of the category of seducing spirits now people have asked me what they were I don't have the list with me and I couldn't remember them all uh, and sometimes I feel I may offend people if I tell them, but I think this afternoon I'm going to tell you some of them. About the first one that came out was eternal security. About number two or number three was Jesus only. About number four, they didn't all give the name of the doctrine. Some just showed what they were. This one said, no pork, no bacon, no pork, no bacon, no pork, no bacon, no pork, no bacon. So I said, where do you come from? I'm not necessarily recommending this, I'm just telling you the way it happened. And they, this no pork, no bacon spirit, mentioned the name of a preacher who is known to me. And I happen to know that he teaches that you mustn't eat pig. <laughs> this is rather a strange. This was really quite an experience because a lot of quite well-known personalities in the relig religious world were mentioned by name. Well, I have to say to you that this really is in line with Scripture. Would you stop, I mean, would you look for a moment in First Epistle of Timothy, chapter 4, verses 1, 2, and 3. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons, Speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. It's the spirits that speak lies in hypocrisy. That's clear in the Greek. Verse 3, forbidding to marry. That's one of the doctrines of these seducing spirits, that it's wrong to marry. And, um, of course, we've encountered this recently in the Atlanta area. I suppose you're familiar with that, some of you. It's rather good that you're armed with this information. And commanding to abstain from meats, it means foods, which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. This is a very common and rather subtle form of satanic deception. If you want to be really spiritual, there are certain kinds of food you don't eat. Now, if you don't like pork and bacon, you are not obligated to eat them. But don't make a religious law out of it, because it's unscriptural. Why? Verse 4 says, every creature of God, and it's referring to food, is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. 
for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. And in line with that, let me just turn you to Acts, the 15th chapter. Acts chapter 15. You remember the question in Acts chapter 15 was, what was required of Gentiles who wanted to become Christians? Were they obliged to come under the law of Moses with all its ordinances and requirements? Many of the Jewish believers said, yes, they must come under the law of Moses. But you remember the final conclusion was, no, they did not have to come under the law of Moses. So, in the end, this is the conclusion, and I want you to read it, as I, or follow as I read it. Acts 15, verse 25. You should read the whole chapter to see the background. It seemed good unto us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have sent therefore Judas and Silas, who shall tell you also the same things by mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that ye abstain from meats offered to idols, from blood, from things strangled, and from fornication. Those are the only four requirements transmitted from the law of Moses to Gentile believers. You are not required to be circumcised. You are not required to observe the Sabbath. You are free to eat anything except these three categories of things which you are not free to eat. You are not free to eat anything offered to an idol or anything which has the blood still in it, not has, has not had the blood drained out of it, or anything that's strangled. Why are you not allowed to eat anything strangled? Because the blood remains in it when it is strangled unless the throat is subsequently cut. So this is an answer to many things, including Seventh-day Adventism, which says that you're obligated to observe the Sabbath. The scripture says no. No greater burden than these four necessary things. Those are the only requirements transmitted to Gentile believers from the law of Moses. We are not under any other legal obligation of the law of Moses. Aren't you glad? If you're not, I am. Um, all right, let's go on with this little record. I'm going to tell you a little bit more. Incidentally, one of the spirits that came out of her, I don't hope I'll offend nobody, but it was Seventh-day Adventism, which, you know, is traced back to a woman who had a revelation of the Ten Commandments and saw the Fourth Commandment circled in light. But that was a spurious, demonic, Revelation. Now, I'm not saying all Seventh-day Adventists are bad people. Some of them are wonderful people. But the origin of that particular teaching is demonic. Really, actually, I don't know how long I should go on with this. It's almost entertaining. Um, I mean, it, it was, if it wasn't serious, it was comical. And sometimes it was both. Uh, let me tell you one thing about this that convinced me I was not being fooled. See, I was pretty careful. In the course of this, which must have lasted something like two hours, one spirit said, we worship God in stones and trees. I said, what else? And it said, in bird's feathers. So I said, what kind of a spirit are you? And it said, fetishes. And I tell you, young people, much of what the hippies are under is fetishes, you see. And, uh, and we saw a lot of fetishes burnt yesterday. So I said to this spirit, where do you come from? Because they were all telling us, some came from Mexico, some came from Britain, some from all over the place. Where do you come from? And it said, from Africa. Well, I had spent five years in Africa as a missionary. Oh, I said, what part of Africa? said, East Africa, which was where I'd been a missionary. So I said, oh, do you know me? And it said, yes, I know you. So I said, where did you see me? And it said, it fo I followed you round wherever you went. So you can imagine I got interested. <laughs> so I thought I'll check on this, and I will not go into details, but I asked about ten questions that no one could have answered correctly who was not intimately acquainted with East Africa, the various tribes and customs and cities and so on. 
Every one of those questions was answered immediately and with absolute accuracy, even to the understanding of the Swahili language. Now, I checked with that girl, and she's a friend of ours today. She had never been near East Africa, knew nothing about it, and didn't understand a word of Swahili. So I was convinced, whether you are convinced or not is another matter, that I was dealing with another personality that was not the girl that knew a lot more about East Africa than the girl did. Well, I asked it what city it was associated with. I said, was it Nairobi? No. Was it Mombasa? No. Was it Kisumu? Yes. Kisumu is the city that uh, Wendell Wallace was talking about the other day. We lived there five years or near there. So I asked it what tribe, and it named the Luo tribe, of which Kisumu is the central city. How many of you knew that? All right. And then I suddenly realized that it's the Luo tribe that do worship the spirits that are found in rocks and trees. In fact, they'll protect their cattle by bringing them and driving them round and round to certain sacred trees. And also... To ward off evil spirits, they decorate themselves with bird's feathers. So then I asked this spirit, I said, what else do you do? And it said, and I, I will not even attempt to imitate its voice, but with tremendous smug satisfaction, it said, we kill babies. I said, what kind of babies? And it said, twins, the mothers are very sad. And I remembered immediately that the Luo people believe that twins are the result of demons or evil spirits. And if twins are born, they're put out to die. They are never raised. So you see that absolutely everything that was said was absolutely in line with reality. And it opened up a whole new field of understanding for me as to the background of the world in which we live. And the real reasons why people do things. Well, after that, there were many, many other spirits, and some of them named preachers in America. One was a spirit, I cannot remember what it said its name was. I think it was, essentially, it was fanaticism. I don't think that's the name it used. <laughs> so I said, uh, where do you go? <laughs> and it said, oh, we go to all the big meetings. <laughs> So I said, which preachers do you like best? And it named three preachers, of which the last one was A.A. A. Allen. So I said, uh, why do you go? Oh, it said, he thinks we're religious. He thinks we're from God. Now, A.A. A. Allen is dead, and most of you probably know the very unhappy circumstances of his death. And so I feel free to say that. The other two preachers are still living, so I won't mention them. I tell you, if ever anything taught me the need of caution in religious experience, this did. Then there was one, the girl wriggled her hips and stamped her feet. And I said, what are you? And it said, rhythm. And I said, where do you come from? And it said, the nightclub. And I said, what churches do you go to? Oh, mainly Baptist and Pentecostal. There was another one. She, her whole body writhed and twisted like a snake, and she began to hiss. I said, what are you? She said, snake worship. I said, where do you come from? All, oh, mainly Arkansas and Texas, said. They think we're harmless. They don't know we're deadly. <laughs> of course, you know, those are the areas where they have the snake handlers. There was another one that said, um, we sing in the spirit. <laughs> So I said, where do you come from? It said, Zion, Illinois. And those of you know, that know Zion, if you know it intimately, you'll know the particular place that it comes from, originally associated with James Alexander Dowie. I don't know whether there are any others that I should mention. Anything comes to me. But you see, what I saw is that unless we are watchful and discerning, we're in great danger of being fooled by a religious show. In my opinion, the most dangerous spirits are religious spirits. They're twice as dangerous as all the rest put together. Since then, I've frequently discerned what I believe to be religious demons operating in all sorts of meetings. Oh, another one that was interesting was false prophecy. <laughs> 